Well, the empowerment zone makes a lot of difference. Uh, they say uh, success has a million fathers and, uh, and failures are, are bastard, but uh, when the empowerment zone came at the time that Bill Clinton was president, most people don't know, I had passed the empowerment zone legislation before Bill Clinton. It was just that Bush vetoed it. But I had Republicans and Democrats supporting it because it wasn't a black idea, it was an economic development idea. And it involved at that time people going to school, getting educations, becoming more productive, having economic development, getting people to, to, to be able to get decent jobs. And ultimately it means that instead of talking about jail and welfare and homelessness, you were talking about paying taxes. So you're talking about improving the national product, you're talking about international thing. It just makes a whole lot of sense. It's not a minority thing. And so when this package was presented uh, to Bill Clinton, I might add at the same time I was advocating the candidacy of his wife for senator, but I don't think I had anything to do with it. Just getting ready to be designated and having a mayor like David Dinkins saying, we're 100% behind. The city would do more than we want. Having a governor like Mario Cuomo says, Wrangell, if you do this, you can depend on my support. Just having Columbia University say whatever backup you need. Having a cadre of ministers saying, you bring that home. We'll show you, boy, what we can do for it. And knowing if it passed that not only would I get one, but I had an additional responsibility to make certain I had the flagship, that New York and Harlem had to show that we could do it. And um, as I said, when people know that there's an environment of, for success, some come back home, some would like to get business next to you, Franchises like to say, let me try it out. Percy Sutton, before the empowerment zone, said he was going to bring back the Apollo. People didn't know about the Apollo. They thought it was dead. When that thing came back on 125th Street and people started walking, uh, the worst thing about the whole thing is that you have to be successful if you're on 125th Street in order to pay the rent. But if you think about the increase in jobs and to find out that we have not been as hard hit by 511 as that downtown was. We're now talking about redevelopment of the East River and having a Washburn project that's going to be a mall there. We're going to have an automobile mall uh, built next year on 25th Street. We're having the West Side Pier working with Columbia University to have a recreational and, and housing development economic area there. And uh, quite frankly, uh, our stock, if we can make certain that we have controls of the rent, that under Dave Dinkins we've been able to take city-owned property and combine that with developers to lower the rent so that we can have luxury apartments on tops, mixed rentals on the bottom, and the quality of our stock is just the best that we can have. So instead of people fleeing and instead of having to fear gentrification, we have people coming back saying, I never did like Jersey that much. <laughs> <laughs>